What's up, addicts? Welcome to the Fantasy Addiction Network. Today, we're going to be breaking down the week four slate for daily in DraftKings and FanDuel for the XFL. But hey, if you guys are new to the channel, do me a huge favor. Please click that like and subscribe button. It really helps me out and will help grow this channel. So if you like what we're doing, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Anyway, let's get right into this. All right, guys, so we need a little bit of a redemption this week. Last week, Cardell Jones sunk our battleship a good bit after his complete implosion of thrilling four interceptions. So definitely are looking to get right back into the fray of things and dominate this week. Now, uh, kind of like we've been doing and, uh, you know, with the exception of Cardell Jones doing so terrible last week, it's been working out really well. Uh, in terms of just there's been a huge spread between the top end quarterbacks and the bottom quarterbacks and then same thing for defenses the top defenses perform significantly better than the bottom half defenses so if you want to have any chance at of reaching any type of a pay structure even in cash games but uh, specifically in GPPs, you really need to make sure that you have uh, a really solid quarterback and defense option. I keep calling it the sandwich because that's really what it is. If either ends of that sandwich falls out, everything else in the middle falls out as well. So if you have a solid quarterback or defense, that is really going to help keep your team together. So um, this week, the guys I've identified as the best targets for your quarterback side of the sandwich. You're definitely gonna wanna target Philip Walker a lot this week, but you're also gonna wanna target the opposite quarterback in that game, Landry Jones. This is the highest over under on the week, this game between Houston and Dallas. So while I think Philip Walker will have the better fantasy day, Landry Jones comes in at a lot cheaper price, as you can see here, he drops all the way down from 12,000 to 9,800. So that opens up our lineups a bit more. And if you wanna go up a bit further of a discount and you wanna avoid the quarterbacks in this game you can also make some pretty sweet lineups if you target the quarterback for the Tampa Bay Vipers they have Taylor Cornelius starting there it's looking like Quentin Flowers isn't going to play this week and they're not going to be rolling with Aaron Murray so while is definitely not the best option in terms of scoring points I think he'll get enough done for you you might be able to squeeze in a few better players by going all the way down to Taylor Cornelius because he's all the way down here at seven thousand dollars so five thousand dollar salary difference for Taylor Cornelius. Again, what we're really always trying to do is hit that 3X. So if Phil, we pick Philip Walker, he needs to hit 36 uh, DraftKings points for us to um, you know, really hit that uh, upper tier line for our, uh, for our lineup. But with Taylor Cornelius only at $7,000, then he really only, only has to hit 21 to hit that 3x. And then, like I said, that gives us the ability to have a much better lineup elsewhere. So those are the three quarterbacks that I'm targeting this, targeting this week. Now, the way that this slate has worked out, and it's kind of seemed to work out this way for a while, that either the Saturday or the Sunday games tend to be better games. The LA New York game is going to be very interesting. This game, they're going back to New York, and New York has been like basically the worst team on offense and Matt McGloin is out so they're probably going to go with either Luis Perez or Marquise Williams but we'll see if they're able to get anything going at home LA looked great last week but overall New York has a pretty good defense this should be a pretty low scoring game not going to be targeting too many players in this game uh, same thing for Seattle and St. Louis St. Louis dominated on defense last week in St. Louis look for them to do the same thing uh, Brandon Silvers and the Seattle Dragons aren't scoring a ton of points already, so going to play a stifling defense with a huge home team advantage in the Dome, it's going to be very hard for them to do anything. So these are two games, especially in GPPs, that we're probably going to try to avoid. Now, complete different story here for the Sunday games. Houston and Dallas are uh, two teams that give up the most points to fantasy quarterbacks and fantasy wide receivers in the entire XFL. Highest over-under on the week. It's right at about 50 points right now. These games are under 40. I think they're at 36 and 38. Um, and, you know, Vegas is expecting there to be a lot more points scored in this game. 
thus far every single game that Houston has been in has hit the over so pretty much every single lineup that has been successful in terms of like winning the big payouts they've had a lot of Houston players I don't think that that's going to uh, be any different this week so we're going to make sure that we're going to be targeting this game pretty heavily in all of our lineups but then I'm also pretty interested in this DC Tampa Bay game I expect the defenders to have a much better game this week than they did last week against LA there's no way they're going to come that unprepared again but Tampa Bay looked pretty good on offense going against Houston last week. So I wouldn't be surprised if this game also hit the over. I think right now it's at about 45 points, which is still five points higher uh, than the games on Saturday. So the Sunday games are the ones we're going to target the most. Doesn't mean we're not going to have any players from these Saturday games, but these are the ones we want to target. All right, so I'm going to build a few lineups, as I said, kind of talking here with uh, you know those three quarterbacks. And then I'll go through and show you guys all my GPP lineups for the week. We'll build out a few cast lineups and then we'll go over to FanDuel. So one lineup we could do here, this, I'm just going to start with my favorite lineup of the week. Um, we'll start with Philip Walker. Obviously we want to stack it with Cam Phillips here. Like, And I think a lot of people are actually going to be pivoting off of this uh, this week. We don't have ownership percentages, but it's so expensive to own these two guys. You have to get really dirty and <laughs> going down the, uh, the line to figure out who else you can start here with them. But uh, I'm going to show you guys how you can do a really sneaky lineup where we have uh, the three best players from this game, Philip Walker, Cam Phillips, and Donald Parham, all guys who have been doing really well. Uh, and obviously, we need to monitor this. They're both listed as questionable right now, but it's looking like they're both going to play. They had the same injury status last week, and they both played phenomenally, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so now we have... Uh, we built out, you know, this is a pretty expensive lineup we've already taken up a giant portion of our salary. So we're going to need to get some value plays here. A value play at running back that I really love this week is Justin Stockton. Now he played his first game last week in New York. And yes, I know it's New York, but no team is giving up more points to fantasy running backs right now than LA. And last week, Justin Stockton had five receptions and he did pretty good on those receptions. It shouldn't be that hard for him to get nine points to get that three X. He's at the bottom basin so uh, of the salary so it really gives us a lot of option there another guy that i really like in that dallas houston game is sam mobley now sam mobley uh, got four targets last week also had a three-point conversion and he looked really good on those targets definitely looked good coming back off of that injury that he sustained in week two so overall i really like these guys are my favorite value plays if you're playing expensive lineups with guys like philip walker and cam phillips you're going to need some cheap $3,000 options. Justin Stockton and Sam Mobley give us that. And then we can also throw one more guy in from the Dallas Houston game with Flynn Nagel. He got a touchdown last week. He's getting targeted in the red zone and in the slot. Should get enough targets here. And what do you know? We have enough money for the cream of the crop defense here, the Battle Hawks. Bam. That is a gold lineup. I really like this lineup a lot this week, guys. Um, let's do a lineup with Landry Jones just to give you guys a feel for kind of how those can go. So we'll do Landry Jones. I really like Lance Dunbar a lot this week as well. He got 11 targets last week and has been honestly neck outside of Donald Parham has been the most targeted receiver in Dallas should see a lot of usage. Still want to stack that game with Cam Phillips. We'll throw uh, we'll throw Donald Parham in there as well. And as you can see, we've already been able to upgrade our running back, even though we still have Phillips and Parham, just by jumping down from Walker to Landry Jones. It's just a matter of how much worse Landry Jones is going to be in terms of fantasy production. Um, as we've already mentioned, I really love Sam Mobley and Justin Stockton a lot just for the value that they provide because we can build crazy lineups like Landry Jones, Dunbar, Cam Phillips, and Donald Parham. And again, we have the money for the Battle Hawks defense. Uh, let's do one more lineup building like this, and then I'll go over all my lineups with you guys just for the sake of time. Uh, let's do a Taylor Cornelius lineup. So again, now we're going to go even more bottom basin here and let's let's do something fun we'll actually jump up and buy the most expensive running back here with Cameron Artis Payne who should perform pretty well in this week especially because of how much the uh, Dallas Renegades like to run this system through their offense 
I like Rashad Ross a lot to bounce back this week. Tampa Bay has allowed a ton of plays deep down the field, and that is where Rashad Ross makes his money. So I think he'll play really well this week. Trey McBride is another name you want to throw on here. That's the one guy from LA that I'm really targeting this week. With Nelson Spruce out, he should get a lot of love from Josh Johnson over there. And he looked unstoppable against uh, DC, who has been really good against wide receivers. So I'm not sure that New York will be able to slow him down either. But if you see this name and you're not too sure, you can sub him out for Jeff Bidette. Again, Jeff Bidette has not been doing too great either, but getting as many players as we can in the Houston Dallas team or a Dallas game is going to be a really good idea. So anytime you hear me talk about Trey McBride, you can sub him out for Jeff Bidette. They are the same price right now. All right. So with this, we still want to make sure we have a couple players in that Houston Dallas game. So we can't do Cam Phillips at this point, but we could still do Khalil Lewis. He had nine targets last week. He should be used a bit more in the red zone. And then just to make sure we have uh, enough exposure to Houston, we'll go ahead and grab Sam Mobley as well. So now we got two Houston receivers, the best running back on Dallas. Still have Taylor Cornelius here, and then two big play receivers with Rashad Ross and Trey McBride. Both of those guys could go off this week. We don't have, uh, and then with that, um, we can still grab the Battlehawks defense. So there you go. A couple of lineups for you. Let's go through. I'll show you. I have 10 lineups already built out for you guys, uh, including the ones that I just went over. So I'll kind of go over this a little bit slowly, just so that way if you guys want, but you can pause the screen. Obviously, steal these. I don't care. I've entered them in lineups but there's so many lineups out there it doesn't really bother me if you guys use them that's why i put this content out there for you guys and i'm i'm not going to give you advice that i'm not taking myself because at the end of the day that wouldn't make any sense um so there's my philip walker lineups i think i have one more philip walker lineup down here stack james butler is another guy i really like a lot this week i really liked martez carter but it's looking like he's not going to play so i've taken him out of all of these lineups here um and then, like I said, Taylor Cornelius gets in here in a lot of lineups. Khalil Lewis is a good target this week. Rashad Ross. Uh, Devian Smith is a bit of a cheaper option at running back than the guys in the Dallas-Houston game. And I, I do think that Tampa Bay might end up using Devian Smith in a very similar way, similar way that the Wildcats used uh, Martez Carter last week. So look for him to have a pretty explosive game as well. He's a good guy to target. And then... Um, Pretty much, oh, DeAndre Tompkins is a lot cheaper this week. You know he's hard to trust after how much of a dud he had last week. But again, I just expect a lot better things from DC this week. So very cheap option there as well. I'm going to put a list of every guy as well. If you want to check out my website at fantasyaddictionnetwork.com, you can see a list of everyone that I'm targeting this week. These are just a few construction options, but you can mix and match with these guys and come up with the lineup that you feel best about. All right, that's pretty much it for GPP, guys. Let me go over cast games just real quick. I want to give you a few options just to make sure that we discuss cast lineups. We actually have a pretty uh, good option this week in terms of cast lineups because now we're starting to see there are some consistent guys at the running back position that will help us hit that, hit that baseline. But we still got to make sure that our quarterback and our defense is solid. So I'm pretty much only going to go all the way up or down with this one. So I'm either going to be doing Philip Walker or Taylor Cornelius in my cast lineups. So uh, pretty much we want to make sure that we have Cameron Artis Payne. He's been the number one running back multiple weeks now, and I think that he'll continue to be up there in the top echelon for running backs. We can do, uh, you know, save a little bit money on the receivers because we want to make sure we get top end running backs. So I've already mentioned DeAndre Tompkins is a pretty cheap play here. And then we can also jump and grab Flynn Nagel. Both of these guys hold high potential to hit and get a touchdown. So we're just trying to hit that baseline. I think they give us a pretty good upside there. Then we can still grab the other running back here, Lance Dunbar, who carries a pretty good floor. And then James Butler, who's been seeing over 60% of the carries for his team. Should be a high scoring game, carries plenty of potential to score touchdowns here. Also kind of stacks nicely with Philip Walker if they throw to each other. And then you can grab the Battlehawks defense. So that's a nice cast lineup for you guys. Um, you could also sub out the wide receivers and do something if you wanted to jump up and get a more expensive wide receiver like a Keenan Reynolds in that Seattle St. Louis game and then you could grab Sam Mobley so basically just changing the wide receivers up there that's another cast lineup you could do uh, real quick we'll do one with Taylor Cornelius jump over here to quarterbacks mm -hmm. 
Uh, so if we do Taylor Cornelius, we'll still want to do Cameron Artist Payne. But now we could grab Cam Phillips. That's going to really help us hit that line. And then I still really like Mobley. Anytime you see me put Cam Phillips in a lineup, I'm probably either throwing Sam Mobley or Justin Stockton in, in there just because of Cam Phillips' ridiculous $11,700 salary. I think that's higher than we ever saw even with like Christian McCaffrey this last year. So they definitely are trying to price us out of being able to play that Cam uh Phillips and Philip Walker stack, but we still found a way for you guys. It's going to be boss this week. I'm really excited for week four. Um, so here's another cast lineup for you. Taylor Cornelius, Cameron Artis Payne, Cam Phillips, Sam Mobley, Lance Dunbar, James Butler, and the Battle Hawks defense. Um, you could even do, as I mentioned before, those wide receivers that have a very high ceiling this week, Rashad Ross and Trey McBride. You could uh, you know, play that card here if you wanted to do that. Whoops, I wanted that to go to the wide receivers. And then we could still play uh, Debbie and Smith over here, um, which would give us a pretty awesome cast lineup. So you got Taylor Cornelius, Cameron Artis Payne, Trey McBride, Rashad Ross, Lance Dunbar, Debbie and Smith, and the Battlehawks defense. Really good cast lineup there for you guys. All right, that's pretty much it in terms of DraftKings. Want to touch on FanDuel again? FanDuel is less of my cup of tea. I like PPR. I don't really care too much for half point PPR. But I want to give you guys a few options here. Changes up just ever so slightly. Uh, still want to try to get either Philip Walker or Landry Jones here. But if we do Philip Walker, we can actually save a good bit of money. Darius Victor is a nice play this week at only $12. He's seen the majority of the carries over there in New York. And again, as I've mentioned already, LA gives up the most points to running backs out of any team in the XFL. But this allows us to grab a Cam Phillips. We can also steal Jeff Bidette, who's a lot cheaper on uh, FanDuel. I know, again, he's expected to get more receptions, but he's been targeted in the red zone and deep, so he has the ability to blow up. Rashad Ross is a bit cheaper on FanDuel as well, so we can grab him. And then again, my favorite little sneaky play here, Sam Mobley. So there's one FanDuel lineup for you guys. Philip Walker, Darius Victor, Cam Phillips, Jeff Bidette, Rashad Ross, and Sam Mobley. All right, let's do one more lineup for you guys before I let you go. We'll do Landry Jones uh, as our main quarterback here. Uh, so let's try a Landry Jones, Cameron Artist, Payne stack. Um, we'll hit our favorite uh, big play guys here. We'll grab a Trey McBride and Rashad Ross. And then we can also grab Khalil Lewis. He's a little bit cheaper here as well as compared to DraftKings. And then, as I mentioned, Debbie and Smith, great play this week. I would expect them to use him very similar in the way that uh, the Wildcats used uh, Martez Carter. So there's another great lineup for you guys. Landry Jones, Cameron Artis Payne, Trey McBride, Rashad Ross, Khalil Lewis, and Debbie and Smith. Anyway, um, again, I just want to reiterate, thank you guys so much for watching. I, I have been you know, so pumped to be able to do this for you guys. It's been a lot of fun going through the XFL. I'm really pumped to see if this league can continue to succeed, but it's been a lot of fun getting to this point. So um, do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps support what we're doing here at the Fantasy Addiction Network. I want to be able to continue doing this for the for you guys and just having that support really does help a lot. So thank you so much for that. Check out my website. I have a lot more information there for you guys. Uh, list of entire rankings across the XFL. It has the DraftKings and FanDuel salaries on there. I have a bunch of stats if you guys are curious about that, trying to figure out who the best plays are this week. Um, use all the same tools that I do. So make sure you check that out. It's free. Uh, all you got to do is just sign, create an account real quick. So check that out. And that's pretty much it. So thanks again so much for watching. Good luck this week. Hope you guys win a lot of money. And we will see you again for week five.